Hello and welcome to another video with Matrix's Jonathan and Shiva. Today we are doing the second part of our Lucid and Dream series. We are doing the second part of our Lucid and Dream series. Lucid dreaming techniques. Exactly, I wanted to say something else. We have to mention that. Yes, we are consciousness researchers. We deal with astral travel, lucid dreams, spirituality in general, everything that has to do with the matrix and of course spiritual dissociation. Our master technique for all insights and yes, what our specialty is or what we report in our videos is everything we have experienced ourselves, experienced ourselves and not from books or because we have read or heard it somewhere. So everything we tell you is out of our own pocket. Yes, today is about lucid dreaming and techniques. So in the first part we talked about the theory. Exactly. Of course, you should definitely watch it before you watch this video, or vice versa. You watch the video now and then go back to the theory or something, as you like it. It's also exciting. We told you some exciting things. Yes, when it comes to techniques, I would say let's first list the classic techniques that are certainly already known to many who are interested in lucid dreaming. Which one comes to mind? The classic techniques. Yes, I would say the classic three, WBTB. WBTB. Wake back to bed. Wild. Awakened induced lucid dreaming and mild. Mnemonics. Induced lucid dreaming. <laughs> what? What? Well, look it up on Google. We neither. Mnemonics. Exactly, these are our three classic techniques that we will now briefly explain to you. Then of course we will tell you what we do in everyday life. Of course there are the classic reality checks, but there are of course other more exciting exercises that we do. And then we'll tell you what we practice to dream Lucy, i.e. our own special techniques. Yeah, right. So let's first list the classic techniques for lucid dreams. And then we'll tell you which ones we use that don't necessarily correspond to the classic techniques and which, as we found, are more effective. Yes, and that's why it's exciting, namely to experience our techniques. Exactly. People always ask how we do it and then say, yes, I've tried all the classic techniques, but it doesn't really work. And of course, we'll tell you why. Exactly. Let's start with WBTB, wake back to bed. Actually, relatively easy. You lie down, I don't know, at 10 o'clock in the evening. It's best to adapt to your rhythm. If you go to bed at 8, you get up earlier. If you don't go to bed until 3, you shift the rhythm later. Then it's best to sleep for four and a half hours, since four and a half hours is the optimal time for lucid dreams to wake up in a REM phase. And then go straight into the REM phase and enter a lucid dream. When you practice astral travel, you obviously have a different amount of time in between. But as I said, lucid dreams, four and a half hours. That means you get up at 2 over 30. It's best to stay awake for half an hour. Deal with lucid dreams. Think about dreams. I actually recommend not turning on the lights so as not to be disturbed, but you can walk around in the dark and think about dreams. If you want to turn on the light or really want to wake up, you should at least read a book or watch a video about lucid dreams like ours. Then lies down again and tries to get straight into the lucid dream. And the probability is quite high because you woke up in the REM phase and go back into it. Yeah, right. So you should have already gone through three sleep phases with the wake back. Two. Bed technique, a sleep phase lasts an hour and a half. That means we must have slept for at least four and a half hours. 
so that the body has first experienced its sleep, it is then satisfied for the time being. Then we won't be so tired anymore. If we get up at 2.30 a.m. or 3 a.m., maybe it's even better to get up at 3 a.m. Because many people always need half an hour before they finally fall asleep. Exactly, that's true, of course. And for this reason, this is, of course, very advantageous when you enter the fourth sleep phase. Because the fourth sleep phase is the dreamiest sleep phase. And that's why it's so important to proceed in the same way with the wake-back-to-bed technique. Yes, and then of course you have to see whether you can manage it with your workflow in your everyday life. There are also people who don't go to bed until 1 a.m. Or 3 in the morning. Or 3 in the morning, no idea who. And of course you have to stick to the four and a half hours again Stay awake for half an hour and then go back to bed in order to enter exactly the fourth sleep phase. Yes, wild. Wild. Awakened induced lucid dreaming. You then do the next thing. I can't pronounce that. <laughs> What this actually means is that you go straight from the waking state into the lucid dream. You induce a lucid dream, so to speak. This is often done through pictures. Most people then go into the hypnagogic state, so to speak, and then go straight into the dream. As I said, then you use images, and at some point these images take on a life of their own and become scenes. For example, imagine you are walking a dog. There you have the picture in front of your eyes, and you then give this image its own life. At some point you walk along a river, along the meadow, across a paddock, And yes, then you are actually already in a dream. Now all you have to remember is, oh yes, that's right, I'm dreaming. But we'll also give you techniques afterwards so that you can consciously stick with it when the pictures take on a life of their own. And not, oops, I'm dreaming and boom, out again. Yes, so these are the wild techniques. Wild techniques actually mean, to put it very casually, You go directly from the waking state into the lucid dream. That's actually wild, sounds wild, but that's just how it is. It's just the way. And the mild technique, the mild technique, where can you remember that? The mild technique, mnemonics, induced lucid dreaming, actually means nothing other than memory. Based entry into the lucid dream, i.e. Indirect entry. This means you fall asleep and at some point in your dream you realize that you are dreaming. So you wake up indirectly in quite a dream. Exactly, because mild suggestions are also often used that you say to yourself before you fall asleep something like, I'm dreaming, I recognize that I'm dreaming. As soon as I fall asleep, I realize I'm dreaming. So you also work a lot with suggestions, so that as soon as you fall asleep, you realize that you have fallen asleep. This is the mild technique. These are the three techniques that describe the state after you lie down in bed. Other classic techniques include those that are practiced while awake, The classic reality check, so that you check 20 times a day for 10, 20 seconds each time. Yes, am I dreaming right now or am I awake? Exactly. And there are some tricks, for example, the clock trick. If you're someone who likes to wear a watch, you look at your watch, see what time it is, then look away and look at your watch again. Is the same time still available? If the time is not the same, you can therefore only be in a dream. That's the trick. Or just take a pen, take a pen and do the gravity test and drops the pen. 
Watch the pen fall. Does it float to the ground like a leaf or does it fall through the floor because it's so heavy? Or whatever. Or is it perhaps strongly decelerated or strongly accelerated, the gravitational fall of the ballpoint pen? And if the pen doesn't fall the way you're used to in everyday life, you can only be in a dream. Two more reality checks, classic finger counting. In dreams, when you look at your fingers, there are usually not ten. Therefore, reality check is count your fingers. One, two, three, four, five to ten. Look around. Look at your fingers again and count to ten again. Are there really ten fingers? And as you look around, you immediately try to realize that you are actually in a dream. This is actually important. You always have to realize that you are in a dream. That is, when you count your fingers, you say, right, I'm dreaming, I'm in a dream. But you have to really feel it. But we'll get to that later. And another test is the nose test, the breathing technique test. As soon as you do a reality check, you hold your nose, because in the lucid dream you can breathe even if you hold your nose. Of course, that doesn't work here. And that's why the reality check works like this, trying to breathe in. It does not work. Again, and then realize, oh yes, I'm dreaming. And yes, these are the reality checks that you use in dreams to see, oh yes, I'm dreaming. Yes. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, plus 5, 11. Wow, I'm dreaming. Something like that. <laughs> That's pretty much how you can imagine it, yes. Simulation techniques are also recommended so that you can imagine I'm dreaming more often in everyday life. And then try to collect yourself in the present as much as you can to imagine, yes, I'm dreaming, I'm dreaming, I'm dreaming. And that you do this several times a day with the aim that this behavior, if such a technique, including counting with fingers or with a ballpoint pen or with a watch, is carried out frequently enough, then it is... Reflected in the dreams, you then suddenly start doing some reality tests in your dreams. And these tests show you, A, I'm dreaming. And that is the goal of this technology. My first reality check test back then was an app. I thought that was great. Somehow, after a few days, I had an app that just popped up every half hour and said I was dreaming. And at some point it just popped up in my dream and then I realized, oh yes, great, I'm dreaming. So that worked very well, at least for those who really have to work on their cell phones a lot or are on their cell phones a lot and look at it a lot and it suddenly pops up. Oh, I'm dreaming. And then look around and feel like you're dreaming. So don't just look at it and put it away. That's not particularly effective. But look at it and realize that you are dreaming. And yes, that worked well for me because you are reminded of a reality check every half hour. Exactly. Yes, and what kind of app was that? It's called Reality Check or Reality Checks. Yes, in the age of cell phones, the digital age, you can certainly find apps that will help you with this. Yes. You can also take a look at how Shiva described it with her app. Could then also be reminded every half hour. Because if, what do I know, you're sitting in a bar somewhere or walking around outside, then you might not always think about doing a reality check. And the app can then help you. And there's also another app called Sleep Talk that can even automatically record words that are spoken into the room. Yes, 
then you don't have to get a pen, turn on a light, or grab your phone and press record. No, the app does it that way. All you have to do is speak into the room and the app will record what you say. So it reacts to voices. And of course that is also very helpful. Definitely. When you wake up at night and think, oh no, get up now and turn on the light and search for the ship and notepad. Or to type everything into my cell phone that I just experienced in my dream. No. And then you usually stay lying down. That's the problem. And with the Sleep Talk app, you can simply talk in your room. And then you can listen to it again the next morning and then your notes. Before we get to our personal techniques, we'll give you a few tips and tricks, some of which are, of course, well known. Of course, it is important to remember your dreams. Of course, before you can have a lucid dream, it is, of course, important that you generally have a dream memory. And of course you can train that, your dream memory, so that you remember more dreams every night, so that you can tell them apart. Not that you are standing with your bed on the street like I was back then, but that they are two different dreams. So it is fundamentally important to train your dreams, to deal with dreams in general, to remember more and more dreams, to suggest to yourself that you always remember more dreams and to write them down. So a dream diary is essential. It may sound strange, but the more energy you put into something, the more likely it is that you will remember your dreams, become lucid, and create your personal reality. I am a lucid dreamer. Exactly as I said, dream recall is very important. Dream diary and always try to go more and more deeply into the dream world to write down what you remember in ever more detail. Then, as I said, break it down. Is this all part of one long dream or were these perhaps different realities that I visited? And yes, that would be the first tip. Yes, definitely a dream book, highly recommended. Before you even start lucid dreaming, you should remember an average of three dream sequences per night. And once you've done that, then you can start with the lucid dream techniques and then they'll bring something. Because you keep hearing from people, I use the techniques and nothing happens. And then I ask, how many dreams do you remember per night? Yes, none. No, no, that has to be the right order. First, increase dream memory through suggestions. Exactly, Will. Will. Just intention. There must be a really strong will because you think, oh yeah, I'll try the lucid dream. It could work, but it's not very likely. We therefore also recommend the Sleep Talk app because you can use it to record your dreams at night by speaking into the room. And as I said, you should have three dreams on average, and then you can start with the lucid dream techniques. So what is the best way to remember your dreams, dream diary? Keyword. Keywords. What do you mean by keyword? A very significant event that you experienced in a dream. I stand at a table and cut a cake. For example, if you write this down or say it in the middle of the night, you can actually usually move on from there, either forward in the dream or backwards or to the side or whatever. Normally, if you write down a few key words, that's enough to be able to reconstruct the dream. Yes, exactly. So this is important, dream recall, and another dream memory through suggestion. I remember all my dreams. It is also important that you suggest something like that, for example, going to sleep like that. It's best to actually do reality checks throughout the day and as often as possible, and it's best to always deal with the topic of lucid dreaming during the day.
freuen, uns zu beschäftigen. Wir erschaffen ja unsere Realität. Und je mehr we create our reality and the more energy we put into a reality, the more likely or the faster it will manifest. Or rather the faster it will manifest. And yes, that's why you should really do at least 20 reality checks a day. At least. Yes, what is also important is to always remember in everyday life when you do a reality check that it is actually a dream, that everyday life is actually a dream. So when you finish the reality check, you have to say, I'm dreaming. So no matter when, you have to recognize that you are dreaming in order to take that with you into the lucid dream or into the dream. Yes, that means that every reality test you do in your dream is always confirmed positively. Not that you look at the clock and say, no, it's still the same time. Yes, still the same time. No, it's not a dream. That shouldn't be the result because it's about your reality checks being reflected in the dream. That means it's wiser to always pretend than if you're always in a dream, as you say. That would be the wisest thing to do. That's why a reality check should always be positive, even if you're in everyday life. Even if it's not true at all, because you're in everyday life. But your subconscious doesn't care. Your subconscious assumes that you are always dreaming. And that's why it's very important that a reality check is positive. These are the most important tips that come to mind spontaneously, I would say. Then we now come to our personal reality checks and techniques that we use to dream Lucy. For me, 20 reality checks are simply not enough. The way I do it is that every minute, every five minutes, I do something and remember that I'm in a dream. That means I try to integrate the feeling of a dream into everyday life. This means that I also perceive my entire everyday life as a dream. It's a little difficult at first, but after a few days, if you do it over and over again, every few minutes, it becomes very easy, then everything actually feels like a dream. And in the end, since we are only connected to alternative realities with our consciousness, as we already said in the previous video, at the beginning I did this with an app to keep reminding myself that I, I'm just... Doing this reality check, feeling like I'm in a dream. And yes, I still do everything really as if I were initially perceiving everything visually as a dream. This is Dream Jonathan, this is the Dream Cat. I have my Dream Cafe here or my Dream One. It wasn't that easy for me at the beginning. That's quite good. To say dream cafe, because then you don't really notice it. But my dreamed coffee, that was the word for me, where I, oh yes, I'm dreaming this coffee right now, exactly. And then I did that with everything, everything, the whole house, or when you're out and about. I'm sitting in the dream cafe, or I'm having a dream meal, something like that, yes. Everything is a dream. Everything is a dream. And what is important is to develop this feeling. This is actually crucial. Just saying that doesn't help, unfortunately. You really have to develop the feeling of a dream by remembering old dreams. How did that feel? And brings this memory more and more into everyday life. That's one of the techniques I do. Yes, that's why it's very important. And that's also our technique that we use so that for example, when we get tired in everyday life and then plan to go to bed, we don't say, I'm going to sleep now. Oh yes, words exactly. Pay attention to words. This means that when you say sleep, it often means blackout. Close your eyes, close the doors and wake up again in the morning. That actually means sleeping. Playing stones. <laughs> Playing stones, exactly. And then you say, I'm going to go dream now. 
In order to prepare my mind for this, I will now go into the dream world. It's also important not to always think about what you're going to do tomorrow when you go to bed. Precisely. Many people do that too. They lie down in bed and then imagine that they will be sitting at breakfast tomorrow and eating their bread and jam. No. Imagine what you will do in the dream. Don't just think about breakfast tomorrow in the 3D matrix in everyday life, but imagine what am I doing in my dream. What could I do there? What could I do like that? What would I like to experience? Oh, I'm really looking forward to it. I'm about to start dreaming again. That you learn to incorporate a different routine into your everyday life. So don't always say, I'm going to sleep now, I'm going to sleep now, I'm going to listen to my mattress or something like that. But always say, I'm going to dream now, I'm going to go dream something exciting. Or are you looking forward to the dream world coming first before your coffee and your jam bread comes? This is also very important. Yes, the intention is very important. This means that when you lie down in bed and have made it clear to yourself that you are now going to dream, set the intention. With suggestions or simply spoken words or mentally, I am now having a lucid dream or as soon as I fall asleep I am lucid dreaming. You just assume, you expect that you will have a lucid dream. And if you want to support the whole thing, this is your last thought with which you fall asleep. Something like that, a suggestion like I realize that I'm dreaming. I realize that I'm dreaming, you can't think of anything else. Just this one sentence. This has always worked really well for me. I was always pretty much in the lucid dream. I don't like to think so much when I want to fall asleep. I'm dreaming, I'm dreaming, I'm dreaming, I'm dreaming. And that happens relatively quickly. That was enough for me. I always find such complicated sentences when you're in a bit of a daze, tiring. But I dream is quite good. What else you can do in everyday life? As we have practiced in some cases, every door you go through, you say to yourself, I'm dreaming, this is a dream. We have come to the conclusion that it is also very helpful because in dreams, when you go through a door or climb through a window, you often change reality. The dream changes. And that's why we thought, yes, if you often change your dream when you go through something, like a door, for example, then it would be very appropriate to be in these moments in everyday life when you go through a door to remember that you are dreaming. Imagine the door as a portal. As soon as you go through the portal door, you are suddenly in another reality or are you in a dream? You can do this really well if you have a few rooms and you walk through them. Oh, the portal. And then you look completely amazed. What awaits me? You really have to play like it's real. So that's really, really important. Pretending to be so, how you think or how you want to really get into that dream state, that lucid dream state. You really have to pretend and expect it. Pretending and expecting, that's good, yes. So that's how you should proceed. Sure, some of you are probably thinking, my God, do you know how many doors I go through a day? That's probably 127, that doesn't matter. It's not important that you really exactly what you said the other day. That's not important. The result is not important, but the result in your head is important because, as I said, the subconscious cannot differentiate. Of course, another important point is if you run on autopilot all day. Exactly. You shouldn't be surprised that you're also running on autopilot in your dreams. This means that several times a day you have to stop, look around and try to collect yourself in the present. To become conscious. Yes, I found that very difficult at the beginning. So, to really be aware not in a robotic way, but that it clicks again. Yes, that's right, I'm conscious. My trick was the cell phone again. 
I found an app that reminds me of this every minute. I am conscious. Every minute. When you start practicing this, the awareness lasts maybe a few seconds. It's like dissociation. How long can you not hold a thought? And that's how it is with awareness. So every minute really reminds you throughout the whole day. Mm -hmm. Did it remind me to be conscious? And that's really tiring at the beginning. Of course, at some point it also worked without the app. But that is a task. Stay aware of everyday life. This is really important because if you are not conscious in everyday life, how are you supposed to become conscious in dreams? I think this is actually one of the crucial tips for Lucidity's dreams. Be conscious in everyday life or dreams. Which is essentially the same? Yes, of course. Another technique that I use is the, how can you say, frozen picture technique. Frozen picture technique? This means that when I lie down in bed and close my eyes, I imagine a detail from the everyday world. For example, a curb or a car mirror, an outside mirror. Then I try to imagine the image as clearly and as vividly as possible. First of all, it's like this for most people, not for everyone, but most people initially have an image in the background, in the back of their minds. Imagining a car mirror like this. Really boring. Nobody normally does that. I think that's the trick then, right? That's the trick too, this detailed perception. Because when you become lucid in a dream, you first start looking at details because you are so amazed at how real a lucid dream is. And then you look at a lighter on the table or you grab an armrest and think, wow, that armchair, it's so real now. This is so gross. That's what you think at that moment. And that's why you can start with it beforehand. So when you lie down in bed, close your eyes, imagine a curb or a side mirror or any other detail and as vividly as possible. And with this technique, I always made it so that the image, let's say, of the outside mirror suddenly came forward. And when the picture came from the back to the front and I could really see it vividly in front of my eyes, I was in a lucid dream. Very cool, immediately. That was a technique that I always like to use and still use. And with that, you can achieve a lot. Sounds exciting. This is good for the wilds, i.e. for those of you who would like to enter the lucid dream directly from the waking state. Yes, at some point it occurred to me that I like being a hypnagogue. I've always done that. It just never occurred to me to use the hypnagogic states as a springboard to lucid dreams. Because you are already half there, half there, and can, of course, enter the lucid dream directly via the hypnagogic states. Of course, it is important to stay awake, i.e. to stay mentally awake and fall asleep. You have to train that. I actually practice this three hours a day, midday, evening and night. I always lay down for an hour at a time, another hour at lunchtime, then in the evening before I fell asleep, in order to really delay falling asleep. At some point I trained it to the point where I was a hypnagogist all night long. I didn't come up with the idea to then go into lucid dreams because the hypnagogic nights are the most exciting, so to speak. But either way, if you're a hypnagogic, you're at least pre-lucid, so you are definitely semi-lucid if you are a hypnagogue. As I said, it's really important to train, not to just go to bed and slip into a coma, but rather to delay the moment of falling asleep, of becoming unconscious, and thus be able to learn about images, hypnagogies, states, etc., to be able to enter the lucid dream directly. Also very good for those of you who tend to go to bed, close your eyes and sleep quickly. 
city gibt es auch eine Technik. Das heißt also für die There is also a technology for them that is for those of you who fall asleep quickly, who have no problems with sleep disorders or anything like that, who say, well, if I lie down in bed, I'll be asleep in three seconds. For them it is good to count, for example. One I dream, two I dream, three I dream. And when they reach 20, they often continue counting in their dreams. That's what I do. If I dream, I dream, I dream. Exactly, that works very, very well. That is also very good. <laughs> Counting was too tiring for me. But whatever. So this for the fast bums among you? Exactly. What is also very exciting is that, as is often the case, there is always a hardliner exercise. For the hardliners, that is, for those who really want to know. For those of you who have very flexible morals, you can, for example, use a hardliner technique. The intrepid, the more ruthless among you, the cooler tempered ones, for example, as soon as they lie down in bed, concentrate or something, imagine that they are shooting themselves. Or throw themselves off the skyscraper. These are options that you can also use so that you can somehow get into a dream reality through this feeling. Or then suddenly, even if you're in a dream, you might suggest, yes, as soon as I dream, I'll shoot myself. <laughs> okay, you can do it. This is a hardline exercise. Or take drugs. Also very exciting that when you are in a dream, you are taking drugs. in order to become more awake. This allows you to wake up in your dream. Oh, well, you don't take drugs in everyday life, but in your dreams. Not daily. So don't smoke weed beforehand, okay? Yes, correct. Okay, yes, in conclusion, it is, of course, still important to say that you should also practice in everyday life to have lucid dreams, to remain conscious, awake, and focused. To stay focused, aware and awake, so do concentration exercises, awareness exercises, attention exercises. Just five minutes at a time is enough to increase your focus. Focus is extremely important because if you want to lucid dream, but you think about apple croissants all day long, then you probably won't be able to induce a lucid dream. If you can't think about lucid dreaming for even five minutes at a time, so maybe really focus and do concentration and mindfulness exercises, five minutes here, five minutes there, is really helpful for a lucid dream. Most people have focus and concentration problems and are unable to concentrate in bed on the fact that they actually want to have lucid dreams. Most people think about their everyday lives or think about what they have experienced or go over their emotions and feelings and moods. And all that really matters is that as soon as you're in bed, everyday life is forgotten. Now it doesn't exist anymore, but you focus on suddenly dreaming without even distracting yourself and thinking about it again. Oh, what else? Does the boss have before? Why did he complain to me? That kind of thing, really staying focused. So incorporating small exercises like this into everyday life is helpful. Yes, and then? With full will and power, commit yourself firmly. Tonight I'm having a lucid dream. Will and determination and patience is important in any case. Yes, dear ones, these were a few little tips and tricks, techniques, and our personal application formulas. Yes, we wish you much success, and we look forward to receiving comments about your lucid dreams. And what techniques you use, what helped you really induce a lucid dream, it will definitely help a lot of people if you tell it like that. Exactly. Yes, if you know a really great technique or something, some people will probably be happy if you write it in the comments. Let's see what kind it is. Ciao.